Today we begin our discussion of the ninth and 10th commandments, thou shalt not covet. And as they appear in the catechism, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now Martin Luther broke this into two commandments, but many Christians view those as one commandment, do not covet, and that's because they divide what Luther considered the first commandment into two commandments. But that is a talk for a different day. Today we're talking about coveting, all forms of coveting, and how it is uh, dangerous for God's people. Uh, the Apostle James uh, has written in James chapter 1, verse 14, Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. You see, God has created a world that is good, and it is full of all sorts of good things. But when sinful human beings begin to put their own wants or desires ahead of what is God's plan for them or what's best for other people, then our lives can be filled with so much stuff that there isn't room for the really, really important stuff. And so today, uh, we have a few things to illustrate how this happens. There are two different jars, and we have three different uh, containers, bowls or measuring cups, full of different things. We have a big bowl that is full of rocks, rocks that are big and they are bulky and they represent the most important things in life. Uh, things like uh, faith in Jesus Christ, things like love, uh, family, happiness, joy, and the sorts of things that give us those things. We have another uh, bowl here that is full of pebbles, which represent things that are that are good, but maybe not as, not as important. And then we have this very large uh, bowl that is full of sand which represent the, the things in this world that aren't uh, really important. And what we're gonna do is we have two jars, a big jar and a little jar. We're gonna fill them up. The big jar we're gonna fill with the sand first. So again, the sand uh, represents the things that are, are good or okay, but maybe not the most important things. And so carefully pour the sand into the jar and, or maybe not so carefully, maybe we just make a big, huge mess with it. Or we're just gonna try to do it like this. You can see the jar is getting filled with the sand, and we're getting lots of sand in there, which, which could be all sorts of things. It could be our favorite video streaming service, be it Netflix or Amazon Prime. It could be uh, video games. It, it could be sports. You know, all these things are, are good, but if we fill our lives with those things, then when it comes time to fit in other stuff that's maybe more important or better for us, and that's where the, the pebbles fit in, we find that we can fit some of those in, but not an awful lot. And if we fill our lives with the pebbles and with the sand first, when it comes time for the really important stuff, things like uh, time uh, in, in worship so that I can receive God's gifts, family, there's two things. Uh, let's say doing my homework is three. Uh, let's say that uh, having a job is number four. If uh, number five uh, is uh, something else like uh, taking care of my body, how about taking showers? Also very important. We want all of our young people to take showers on a regular basis. As you see, because I filled my life with all of the fun stuff that wasn't really important, I only have room in the jar for about six of the big rocks, which represent the most important things. The smaller jar, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to begin by filling it with the rocks, again, which represent the most important things. So we're just going to count the rocks as we add them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I think we'll call it good with 30. So we have 30 big rocks in this little jar, which is five times the number of rocks that we have uh, in that jar. And now we're gonna add about a cup of the pebbles. So these are things that are that are good, uh, they're, they're helpful, maybe not necessary, 
And we're gonna try to fit an entire cup of those pebbles in the jar. Uh, let's see, we'll shake her up a little bit. I'm gonna settle down hopefully. There we go. And so we have a life here that is full of the most important things, things like, like worship and, and time in the word and time with family and working on my job and doing my homework. And if we fill our lives with the most important things, we, what we find is that we still have room for plenty of other good and fun things. So that's again what the sand represents. And as we put it in there, we're going to kind of try to shake her down. And as we shake it down, we can see that it kind of fills in the holes and the rocks. So that there's room, there's plenty of room for lots of fun stuff, lots of good stuff. Maybe the things that aren't as important. But because we put the most important, the big rocks in first, representing the most important thing, there is room for all of the above. There's room for... Uh, lots of the important stuff, lots of the good stuff. Uh, there is room for the smaller pebbles, but then also the, the sand, which represents the fun things, the good things. If we get greedy, if we get covetousness, if we want the things that aren't the most important things, and we spend our lives trying to get those things first, then as we see, we don't have room left in our life for the most important things. But when we listen to God's word, and we make sure that we spend our time trying to get those things that are most important and filling our life with them and then adding the fun stuff. There is plenty of room for both the important stuff and the other fun stuff. And focusing our attention on what God wants for us and what is most important for us, that is, gives us a good balance for our lives and that keeps us from sinning, from indulging in those Sinful behaviors that, if put first, uh, can suck all of our energy, all of our time, uh, everything that we have away from the most important things that God has given to us. Please pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, we ask that you would help to keep us so that our hearts are free from greed or anger or, or lust or anything else that would get us to fill our lives with things that aren't as important as the most important things, uh, things like worship, family, uh, working on our education or our schoolwork. And we ask that when we get our lives uh, out of whack, or our priorities become uh, not what they should be, we ask your Lord that you would show us by your word and remind us of what is most important, help us uh, to invest our time in those things, that we may have time and, and find our lives full of the best things, but also content with what you give to us, full of the good things as well. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.